Hi, everyone. We'll get started in just a minute or so as people are still coming into the Zoom room. All right, so we'll go and get started. Hi, everyone. My name is Caroline Horn, and I am the Assistant Director for New Student Programs. We are excited to welcome you all to our academic services at Bentley Falcon Live Chat. Throughout our presentation today, you will be able to submit questions using the Q&A button at the bottom of your screen. We will cover approximately 20 minutes of content and then we'll open it up to all of your questions. We will be recording this session, so if you want to check in on anything at a later date, you will be able to access this session. And if there are any questions that we may not be able to answer today, we will make sure that we will get those answers to you, so feel free to send us an email after the session. Now I'm going to hand it over to one of our orientation student coordinators, Devin Breen, who will be doing some of our introductions for the day. Uh, hi, I'm Devin. I'm currently in London, um, but I'm coming back just for you guys in the fall. Um, and I will be helping to run the orientation with three other student coordinators as well. Um, and if the academic services would like to introduce themselves in any particular order, I'll give them that freedom. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much, Devin and Carolyn. My name is Melissa Jenkins. I am the Director of Undergraduate Academic Advising at Bentley. I have been here, I'm starting my 15th year, and I have been in higher ed for uh, over 22 years now. So I'm really excited to have the opportunity to speak with you. Um, and provide you with a little bit of context on how you can support your student this summer and as they transition to a Bentley student. Uh, Megan, you want to do a quick intro for you? Sure. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. My name is Megan Charbonneau. I'm one of the assistant directors in undergraduate academic advising, and I will be helping to moderate the Q&A today. So welcome. We're so excited to talk with you. Great. Right. And also you see on the screen, we have Jamie Bang, who works in our office, and Valerie Camo, who will also be helping out behind the scenes with the Q&A as we do the presentation. So without further ado, I think it is probably time to get started. So what, um, what we're going to be going over today is basically just five main points or different areas that I wanted to discuss. Um, while we were together, and then we'll do, as we said before, some Q&A. So I thought it would be really important to let you know what academic services is and how advising falls under that umbrella, how you can help your student prepare for registration uh, this month, what you can expect for your student the day of registration, uh, what you can expect post-registration, because there's a lot that goes on behind the scenes that we want to make you aware of, um, and then how you can support your student as they arrive to campus. So academic services is um, an office that encompasses four different functional areas. I've put our mission statement on the slide that you can read at your own leisure. Um, and it's also posted to our website. But the four different functional areas are undergraduate academic advising, academic support services, disability support services, as well as graduate academic advising. So these four functional areas are centrally located in an academic building, Jenison, right where students are coming in and out all day long to take their, their classes. So if a student has needs to get in touch with any one of these functional areas, it's super easy to do so um, by just stopping in the office and asking a question or getting information that they need. In addition to that, there are other ways they can get in touch with academic services. We all have um, either GA, general accounts for our different functional areas. So if they wanted to talk to any one of us, they could use the academic services Gmail account. They could email their specific advisor. They can make an appointment with their academic advisor. And those are 30 minute scheduled appointments at a convenient 
time for them. They can make them using the online system, super easy. Um, they get reminders when that appointment is, and they can just come in and have those conversations. They can use the whole 30 minutes or they can use less than that. We also have drop-in hours, which are super helpful. Those are weekdays from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. Um, and they're staffed by our peer advisors who are highly trained upper-class students um, who can offer a really unique perspective to our students because they're actually sitting in the classes, having the same kind of experience. Plus they have the benefit of being trained in certain information they can share and help out with students for. Um, Disability Services is, uh, has a director and an assistant director who are in the Jenison office. Um, you can email them directly. So if your student um, needs accommodations based on uh, an academic plan that they've already uh, have had during high school or if they think they're going to need one, they can connect with Disability Services uh, either email or um, you can use their website it has a ton of information about what they do, the services they can offer and how a student can take advantage of those students if they are um, approved for accommodations. And then our academic support services is run by our executive director, Leslie Doolittle. Um, she prefers to be emailed directly. Uh, by students if they have questions. She spends a lot of time meeting with them and also referring them to the different resources that she um, puts on in her office, such as tutoring or programming for um, certain academic support um, tasks that they need. And then graduate academic advising is important uh, because we do have some advanced standing programs where students can move right from their undergrad to their grad. That can happen upon graduation or it can happen a little bit early if they're doing the advanced standing in finance program or if they're interested in the advanced standing in business program. So there's a lot to learn about that and your student will have plenty of time in their first year to start to wrap their head around all the different options available to them. Bottom line, we're easily accessible. We're here for students. Even when they don't know what they need, they can come in and ask us and we can direct them in the right uh, place. So this is just a snapshot of what our office can do for your students and how we support them. So I've talked a little bit about our appointments and drop-in hours. Some of the topics we discuss with students are things you would expect from an academic advisor, short-term planning, how to register for courses, what they should be registering for, long-range planning, um, major, minor exploration. So what it would look like to be, you know, a finance major with a marketing minor um, and showing them what that progression would look like. We often have conversations about academic difficulty and academic check-ins, especially as they transition to campus and the Bentley curriculum. We talk a lot about campus navigation, how to use the resources that Bentley has for you. Um, so students have a ton between academic affairs and student affairs, so many resources to help enhance and support their experience. So we do a lot of referral and a lot of education on those different resources. Um, we help students plan for studying abroad. It's really important that they understand that the program they're choosing to go abroad um, and how it fits into their current curriculum so that their progression is not disrupted. We explain a lot about academic policies and procedures. So we're educators. We try and get students to understand not only the curriculum and their academic programs, but all the procedures they need to follow, all the different policies that um, will affect them as they move through their curriculum. We also do a lot of programming. Um, we have our pop-up advising, which is just our way of taking our advising to them basically putting it on the road and meeting them where they're at. That could be um, in the dining halls, it could be in the residence halls, it could be in the library, it could be in a, just in a different building in the lobby as they're passing by our tables there. And if they have questions, they can just saunter on up and ask away. Um, it's quite popular and students do take advantage of it. We definitely increase our pop-up advising uh, leading up to registration because we know that's when student, students will need us the most. We conduct our academic programs fair, which is our large uh, 
fair that happens once a year. And it's basically an exploration fair for us first year students and our sophomores to really do that exploring about what all the different academic opportunities are for them and solidify their plans as to what they're gonna major in, what their minors might be. We do have juniors and seniors who pop in and it might be to solidify some last course choices or it could be considering maybe a switch of major. So it's opened up for the whole campus but we really focus on first year starting to explore sophomores getting ready to make a decision. Um, we do lots of partnerships with other offices and that's both in academic affairs. So our study abroad friends, people in career services and also our students affairs. So we're working with RAs, we work with the Multicultural Center. Um, we work with the Center for International Students and Scholars to combine programs or support programs that they're putting on. So we're available and accessible to students. Uh, we also will take requests from different student organizations or the RAs if they feel like they're hearing from students that there's a need for our office to come in and chat with them or teach them how to do something. Part of what Leslie Doolittle does with academic support, and we help reinforce in a lot of our conversations and programming, are some of the skills that you see under academic support. We don't just do academic advising in terms of course registration and long range planning. We often talk about those soft skills that make a student's experience the best it can possibly be. So talking about their study skills and how they need to adapt that from their high school experience to now the expectations of college. Time management, how to be organized, setting goals and how you can maybe set smaller goals instead of those big ones so they're more attainable, working towards those larger goals or the ultimate goal. How to make decisions, which is often um, a skill that our students really need help with as they transition to college because there's a lot more decisions that need to be made um, and sometimes a little bit quicker than they're used to. Um, the academic support services team offers a tutoring program, so we often make referrals to that when appropriate. Um, and they also run their own sessions through what they call their geek squad, which is an extension of the tutoring program. So many, many ways we support students, lots of opportunities. Um, we have our academic, uh, the advising brief newsletter, which is a great resource because anything we're doing is in that newsletter and advertised well in advance. So that newsletter is emailed to students uh, twice a month. And actually our first year new incoming students will be getting their first edition of the advising newsletter um, somewhere around July, let me check, sorry, July 13th or 14th. So they should be checking their Bentley email uh, because it will have information specific to their first registration in July. A little bit about our advising model. Um, our undergraduate advising model is evolving as we roll out our new curriculum, which we're all very excited about. So to summarize the model as it stands, first year students are assigned a professional advisor as soon as they enroll in Bentley. So late August, their assignment will be placed in Workday. That advisor will be their advisor for their full four years. Barring any staffing changes or huge shifts in population, um, in which case, if an advisor does need to change, the student will be notified well in advance. Their advisor can also be found in Workday under their support network. In addition, first year students will have a Falcon Discovery Seminar. It's a three credit first year seminar that's academic based. And with that course, they get a peer leader. Again, one of our highly trained upper class students who will work with the students through the first uh, through the Falcon Discovery Seminar to help acclimate and transition during their time at Bentley. They also are going to have a transfer seminar peer facilitator for those of you that are students might be transfer students. So we have two populations that we bring in each semester, our new first year students and our transfer population. So both get supported with a professional advisor and also someone who will work with them in their first semester through their seminar experience. We also strongly encourage that students right from the very beginning start to build relationships with faculty and staff. 
the more they, the sooner they do this and the more often they do it, the more comfortable they get doing it. And they also will start to deepen their relationships in year two, three, and four as they start to move into their major courses. So the more people they have in their little network from Bentley, that's a combination of faculty and staff, the more help they'll have when they're trying to leverage those internship and professional opportunities or graduate school opportunities. So I often tell students that making connections with one or two professors or staff members outside of their classroom or office is really important. And if they just did two a semester, then they're going to have over 10 relationships that they can rely on for really good mentorship and referrals as they move on in their professional life. So we really value that and we try and work with our students to make those relationships. That's the, the um, support they'll be getting from uh, academic advisor as well as the different faculty and staff on campus that they choose to seek out and support them. So right now I just wanna transition a little bit about how they can prepare for registration because that's really the next big event that will happen for them. So there was already a slew of tasks that they should have completed and these are all can be found on Bentley Connect. It's a checklist. They've probably been in it quite a few times but you might wanna reinforce and ask them if they're up to date with their tasks on Bentley Connect. They also should have gotten their new student guide, which is called Becoming a Falcon. This is a great guide. It has lots of great information. I often tell students they should keep it out all summer long and keep referring back to it. They also should have done two uh, academic pieces of the checklist. Um, they should have done the critical reading and writing placement essay and that was due on June 8th. And they also should have done their math selection survey, which was due on June 15th. Now, since both of those due dates have passed, if they have not done it, we strongly encourage them to do it. We will still be accepting the responses from the essay as well as the selection survey. And it's really critical to their registration that we have those two pieces of information um, turned in and evaluated before they register. So you can check in with your student. If they have not done that, please ask them to do it. And then the other piece of information that they really need to be understanding and doing is checking only their Bentley email. Quite often uh, during the summer, they'll see a transition where Bentley will stop emailing both their personal email and their Bentley email and just utilize the Bentley email address. And that's starting to happen now. That is our main form, official form of communication. So if we're sending information to them, it's going to be through their Bentley email. If they're not checking it, they're going to be missing out on important information or resources that have been sent to them. So please encourage them to stop using their high school email, their Gmail, their Yahoo, whatever it is, and only use their Bentley email address. There are two important dates that are for the webinar to prep them for getting ready to registration for registration. So first year students will attend the registration webinar on July 13th at 10 a.m. And our transfer population will attend theirs on July 27th at 10 a.m. This is all Eastern time. If students cannot attend, these webinars, they will be recorded and posted within 24 hours. So by Thursday of the next day, those should be posted and they will be emailed a link with a lot of other information. So if they miss it, they can get the information by watching it a little bit later on. After the webinar, but before registration day, so there's a week between the webinar and the registration day, there are definitely some important things that they need to do. Um, a lot of information will have been sent to them. It is really important that they review it, flag it in their emails or bookmark it on the website so that they have easy access to it. So they should be reviewing the resources and that's that webinar video that was created on Wednesday and sent out on Thursday. 
There's lots of links to websites in the emails that they've gotten, and there could be things that have attachments to their email. So they should make sure that they find those and save them. They will also have an opportunity to explore the software Bentley uses to register for courses. So they can practice with Schedule Planner, which is the tool that helps them build schedule options. And they'll also have step-by-step -step guides that will walk them through the process of building those schedules, moving those schedules into the workday environment, which is where they actually register, and then registering with workday. So reviewing those in advance will give them a good sense of what it will look like and how it should operate. And that way, when they're going to do it the day of, they will have those resources with them, but they also have become a little more familiar with it. We will ask students to start to build different schedules during that time. So they can create as many schedules as they want with Schedule Planner, and they should be creating quite a few of them so that they have all kinds of options. We also will have drop-in advising, which will help them prep for registration. So we're going to be with them, uh, opening that up uh, via Zoom on Monday before um, registration. And we will be in different breakout rooms, the different advisors. And if students have questions, they just need to come into the Zoom, ask their questions, get clarification so that they're better prepared on Wednesday. What your students should not be doing, they should not be falling in love with one schedule, one specific course, or one specific course section. That is not the way to approach registration ever. You, they need to have a variety of schedules, a variety of courses, and a variety of different uh, times and days that specific course might be offered. Flexibility is going to be key for them to have an enjoyable registration time. Um, they should not be using Rate My Professor. I know students love to use this. They use it all the time. It is not a good indicator of who, which professor or which class will be a good fit for them. Rate My Professor shows extremes. It shows everyone who is really happy with the course and everyone who is really unhappy with the course. And typically the unhappy and sometimes even the happy have very specific reasons as to why they like or dislike the course. So I often say one man's candy is another man's poison. Um, so students really should stay away from that type of um, assessment tool. It doesn't work very well for them. They also cannot be assuming that they're going to avoid early morning or Friday classes. I think that's kind of what every student, incoming student dreams of. I don't have to go to class every day now. I don't have to get up early in the morning. The bottom line is Bentley is a very vibrant campus. We offer a lot of courses. We use all our flock sections. Classes start at 8 a.m. Our last day class starts at 5 p.m. We do have some night classes. We use all five days. So um, it's not uncommon for students to have early morning, late afternoon, Monday through Friday classes. So those are the assumptions they should not have um, this registration period or any registration period. Day of registration, what your student can expect. So we often try and teach students that your registration day is not a one day event. It's the start of your registration and it's a process. And that's what it will be like every time they go and register. So on Wednesday, July 20th, first year students will register. And on August 3rd, our transfer students will register. They have the same format for both either day. So the setup is exactly the same. Before 10 a.m., your students should check their internet connection, their computer, make sure it's plugged in, make sure that they've closed every browser, restarted the computer, started it back up again fresh. They should make sure that they have their saved schedules and their options available and handy. And they also should have those support documents, those how-to step-by-step guides as they move through the process. During registration, they really should only have one browser open with the registration software. When students try and trick the system and have one browser with multiple schedule planners and multiple workday um, sessions open, it can, it can create actually an error and take more time for them to register. 
They need to have those backup plans available, those backup options. And we want them to know that we will have registration support starting at 10 a.m. when registration opens via Zoom. So much like our drop-in hours, we will have a slate of advisors and support people in breakout rooms in Zoom where they can drop in and ask questions as they're registering. After 3 p.m. that day, the registration support will end. Um, so anyone who's still working on their schedule can continue to do so until Thursday, the next day at noon. So registration opens at 10 a.m. on Wednesday and it will close at 12 noon on Thursday. And this is all Eastern time. After registration support closes, um, if they have questions or concerns, they can email our GA account, which that's where all our emails come from. Uh, it's the best way, the fastest way to get some support. We tell students after 3 p.m. That is a great time after 3 p.m. and for the remaining time when it's open until 12 to complete schedules. So if, as students are working on them, finish them up. If a student completes a schedule and they're happy with it, they really shouldn't play around with it because there's no guarantee if they drop a course and then realize, oh, maybe I do want that course back or, oh, the course I wanted isn't available now. Let me put that other course back in. We can't guarantee that they'll be able to do that. So a bulk of our students are going to register between 12 and 1.30 on Wednesday. If they have a complete schedule, we strongly suggest that they keep that schedule and they don't play around with it while the rest of the time of the open registration period happens. Registration will shut down at 12 p.m. on that Thursday and students will not be able to access their schedule to make changes. They can view it, but they cannot add, drop, or swap classes. It will reopen on Friday, September 2nd, and that's when they're actually on campus. Um, for them to adjust their schedule. And it remains open um, until Monday, September 12th, which is what we call our um, add period, where they can um, adjust their schedules, add or drop cl classes as needed. We always suggest that first year students do this after consulting with an advisor. After registration, so this is the stuff that a lot of our students and families don't quite understand. But at noontime on Thursday, when registration ends, that's when we begin our assessment process of the types of courses we have left to fill and also the schedules. So starting on August 4th, that's when we will do it for transfer students. So we will personally review every student's schedule. So we will start on Thursday and for a good five to, I would say there's three to four business days. We have a, a larger class coming in. So I would say maybe even five days, it will take us to go through all of these schedules and make sure that everyone has a full schedule and that they've adhered to our suggestions that we have made. If, your student has an incomplete schedule, or they did not adhere to some of the suggestions we made that would, that advising guidance that makes a good schedule, then we will email them and let them know. We will send them a detailed email saying, dear so-and-so, you've only registered for three courses. There'll be very specific instructions. Um, every situation has a different kind of email we send requesting a different response from your student. So it's really important that your students read the email and reply when requested to reply um, so that we can figure out their schedule and get them settled as quickly as possible. So by July 28th, and this is bearing in mind our summer schedule, uh, Bentley University in the summer is open Monday through Thursdays. We are closed Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. So bearing in mind all this work happens in a four day work week. Um, if your student has not heard from an advisor by July 28th for first years or August 11th by transfers, it actually is a good thing. It means that their schedule was full, has everything they need and actually adhered to the guidance we suggested. 
So we will not email everyone, only those that we have the concern with their schedule that we want to work with them on. The last piece I wanted to go over real quickly was when your student arrives to campus. So as I said before, add drop swap is closed down for them until Friday, September 2nd. And that is very intentional. Students will move in uh, September 1st. September 2nd is their academic orientation day. And in the morning, both first years will attend an academic presentation that will build on the information that they're gonna get during the webinar in July. And transfers will also attend um, an academic presentation that is more appropriate for them as a transfer student. That will happen in the morning. In the afternoon, um, there's an academic resource fair where students have a plethora of options where they can go and visit. And one of them will be to come and see an academic advisor um, and talk, answer any questions they have about advising in general, but also any questions they may have about their schedule. They'll also have the opportunity to have access to a computer if they need to adjust their schedule based on the conversations we've had with them. So they will be able to sit down and we can work with them to adjust their schedule on their own. So it's really a drop-in advising session with scheduling assistance. So we look forward to finishing up or adjusting any schedules that were not solidified over the summer. So before classes even start, everyone has an opportunity to make sure they get what they need um, so that they can start their first semester. During the uh, first week of classes, we're gonna have expanded drop-in advising in our office. So every advisor's um, doing drop-ins. We have a larger staff participating. And if a student has a question, they can come in and see us during that. They also, as I said before, have their Falcon Discovery Seminar, which is a great touch point with their faculty member, as well as their peer leader. Also during faculty, the, the Discovery Seminar, we have modules that will take place in those when, which means that we'll do an introduction on week three, let them know again who we are, how we can help them and give them some resources now that they're at Bentley and taking classes. And then during week eight of the semester, we will be targeting the information towards, believe it or not, getting ready for their spring registration. So that'll be late October and registration it will take place again in November for their spring classes. So um, lots of support there. Our transfer students will have the same type of support through their seminar class. And then again, as a reminder, your first year student is gonna have the same academic advisor from the time they land on campus until they graduate. So that's also a great support network because they can get to know each other fairly well. So a few final thoughts before we go to Q&A. Um, Make sure your student attends the webinar or watches the recording. Make sure they're reviewing resources, playing with the registration software, creating those schedules. They can come to drop-in advising on that Monday before if they have questions. They need to have multiple options and schedules, and they need to be prepared on that registration day, but also attend the Zoom registration support if they need it. And then just a little bit more advice directly for our families. Um, your students coming in on the new curriculum. So it's really important that you are cautious or ask specific questions or reconnect with our office. If you're getting advice from siblings, uh, family, friends who are currently at Bentley or have recently graduated from Bentley, because unfortunately, they could be giving you advice about courses that no longer exist for the first year students. Um, so it's really important that you're aware that some of the advice you're getting from people may not be accurate for your student. The same holds true for the social media sites. Um, we're really thrilled when we can see parents supporting each other, but we're also aware that unintentionally misinformation can be given out. So again, when we have parents with uh, students who are in the upper classes, they may be sharing information, but unintended, unintentionally providing misinformation. Um, so your students should really be looking at the websites we direct them to and the Bentley website that refers to the new curriculum. Um, if they're looking at some other information, they have to pay attention and see if it's for current students 
or if it's really applicable to them. So anything that says new curriculum and anything from the academic services website that is directed towards new students and new transfer students is probably your safest option. And again, we are emailing your student with a lot of information that is very specific to their class year. So that's always a safe bet. So at this time, we'll invite Megan back on and see if anyone has any questions. We do have just a couple questions that I think would be good to pose um, in front of the entire group. So uh, one parent was wondering um, that what, what advice do we have for a daughter that will be traveling during the webinar? Um, she'll not be able to attend it live. Yeah, so the recording is going to be a fantastic option. Um, not only will it be emailed to her about 24 hours after the webinar, but we're also going to post it on that new student page on the academic services website. So even if for some reason she can't find the email, she can always go to that web page, um, which we refer to often, and watch the video recording there. Also, we have those drop-in hours on Monday after the recording if she needs some clarification from that. Awesome, thank you. We have a couple more questions that are coming sure. through. Uh, we have someone wondering if the process is going to be any different for honor students as they have to take certain classes in potentially certain class sections. Great question. Um, the way in which students register is at, at exactly the same. Um, what they have to register for is slightly different. And the director of the honors program, Professor Christian Rubio, will be doing his own version of the academic overview um, that will happen the day after our, our webinar. So students are encouraged to watch our webinar or attend our webinar, but also Christian Rubio will be sending information about the honors specific webinar. So they have a clear understanding of exactly what they have to register for, um, for classes and specific sections. So really good question. There'll be lots of information. Um, and we'll even have Professor Rubio at our drop-in hours on Monday if any honor students have questions. Awesome, thank you. There's one more in here so far, but we invite you to you know, continue to submit questions if there's anything else you're wondering about. Uh, so how soon can we set up a meeting with our personal academic advisor to go over specific classes? Oh, really good question. So um, we invite our first year students to try and hang tight and absorb all the information that they're getting in July and register for classes. Um, it's a lot, but it's also delivered to them verbally, but also has lots of uh, resources that they can go back to and read. Um, really, the best time for them to come in and have their first appointment is after they arrive to campus. So again, they can see us um, the Friday after they land on campus on, on the 2nd. Um, they can come to drop-ins and ask some quick questions. Those are usually only about 10 minutes long and are really meant to address the most specific needs. If a student's looking for more of a personalized overview of what they're thinking of doing, maybe a little bit longer range plan, what their second semester, maybe their first or second year might look like, that's really a 30 minute appointment that honestly, it is really best for students to wait until the end of September, only because we really want them to settle in and start their courses, focus on adjusting to the Bentley curriculum, all the expectations that come with that, um, and kind of get their bearings before they start worrying so much about the future. Student development theory tells us that students transitioning from high school to college even our most successful, top-notch, well-adjusted students still have a little bit of a, um, still need time to adjust to college because it's just a completely different cadence. And the more they keep looking out and trying to plan and absorb more information than they're actually able to process, it's best if they just kind of stay present in September and focus on that adjustment 
and making sure they understand the current courses they're in, the current syllabi they have to absorb, the way their professors like to teach, all the classroom expectations, trying to move into a new residence hall and getting to know people and making friends. Then at the end of September, we can start to move on and thinking about what does next semester look like? What does the next year look like? So really, I know students are really anxious to come sit with us and plan it all and talk about all the different opportunities, but it often can be too overwhelming for them to absorb the information accurately and worst case scenario, overwhelm them to the point where they start to stress out more than they actually should. So I, I hope that answers the question. I hope it's an answer that you're comfortable hearing. Thank you. Look, we have somewhat of a follow up to that and then a couple new questions I see that are coming through. Um, so a follow up to that would be when do they get their academic advisor assigned and what about the peer leader? Yep. So the academic advisor will be assigned in um, August. Uh, they should be able to see it in Workday by August. It is a technological process that goes through a whole system. So sometime after August 1st, it should be loaded into Workday and they should be able to find it there. Um, their peer leader, I believe their first meeting of the peer leader will happen when they move on campus. Um, there might be an opportunity where the peer leader meets up with their orientation group. Um, and that would be the people that are in their um, in their class. Worst case scenario, if that, I, again, I don't do the planning for orientation, but from what I've understood in meetings, that's what they're trying to have accommodate. Um, if that doesn't happen, then it will be the first day of classes when they meet. But my guess is they'll usually be emailing an introduction email before them. Great, thank you. Looks like just one more question for now, but again, if there's anything else, please feel free to keep submitting. Is transfer seminar something that you need to sign up for? And how and when will a transfer student know what classes they should be scheduling? Really great question. And since Megan is our transfer coordinator, I'm gonna let her answer that question. Thank you, I would be happy to. Uh, so transfer seminar is uh, a six week long seminar that each transfer student will be pre registered for. Uh, the reason we pre register everyone for transfer seminar, we try to group the transfer students with people that will be here about the same amount of time as them. You could be transferring to Bentley as a junior, you could be transferring as a sophomore. Uh, we, we accept transfer students with, you know, 12 credits, you could maybe still be a first year student, but be a transfer student. Uh, so we, we like to try to group you based on, you know, about how much time do you have left here to help build the community and also, you know, students that are only going to be here two years might have very different concerns and priorities than students that maybe have a little bit of a longer time here. So we'll take care of pre-registering students for the appropriate transfer seminar. And uh, to address the question, how and when will a transfer student know what classes they should be scheduling? So with transfer students, again, everyone's coming from a different institution with different amounts of credit. It has to be extremely individualized for transfer students. So sometime between the webinar and the day you register, we're aiming for a Monday before registration uh, launch. We will, we will send each new transfer student a personalized email that gives them advice on courses to take because it truly needs to be individualized to each student. So we will take into consideration the prior credit a transfer student has, about how much time they have left, if there is an intended major uh, that's already been uh, identified. All of those um, components need to come together in a, in a very perfect and succinct way so we can determine as advisors what are, what are the best courses for this student to take to set them on, you know, the best path here at Bentley to, to timely completion of their Bentley degree. So you'll attend the webinar on the 27th. Um, advisors, meanwhile, behind the scenes are constantly looking, uh, looking to see who's ready to be evaluated. Is all the prior credit in? 
Um, so that's something transfer students can do to help us out. Anything admission is asking you for, send it. If they've asked you for a syllabus, please provide it now. If they've asked you for a course topics list, please provide it now. Uh, because if, you're, if your prior credit package is complete, you're going to get the absolute best guidance on what courses to take. If we're not quite sure yet what courses you may or may not be getting, that can make the process a little bit more difficult for us um, and for you as well. Uh, so you'll attend the webinar, you'll get lots of great information from us no later than Monday of the following week. That's also the same day we'll have drop-in advising available for you. Uh, and then you'll have Monday, Tuesday to process all that information, get some, get some schedules going, and then register on Wednesday. So okay. I hope that helps. All right, it looks like um, we have another general question that might be good to ask live. If a class is full, does the software suggest a class or classes that can be taken to continue to earn credits? So that's where building options is really great. And we kind of go through in the webinar, the buckets of electives you need to fill. So we will make some suggestions during the webinar of what types of courses can fill like the context and perspectives, which everyone needs to take one of those types of courses. Um, and so if a course section is full, we always say have a backup section. Um, if all sections are full and it's an optional class you're trying to fulfill, you can, if you don't have any other options available that you've created for yourself, you can jump on that Zoom, talk to an advisor, show them what you're registered for uh, by sharing your screen, and we can look through and make some, some suggestions of what you might like to take. Um, the first year is somewhat prescriptive, so we know that there are specific classes everyone has to take. There's a couple different options. You take either this first semester or that first semester, and then the opposite is in second semester. And then there's some where it's like, pick any one of these uh, arts and science type courses to fit context and perspectives. So that's exactly what the webinar goes over and tries to um, get them familiar with that way of thinking and building schedules and registering. Um, but that's exactly what Zoom is for on registration day. I'm not exactly sure what to take for this last requirement. Can you help me out? Thank you. So it doesn't look like there are any more questions coming in at the moment. Um, but I assume it's okay if we if we um, stand by for another minute or two to see. Devin, Carolyn, do you have another preference? Okay can hang out and wait for a few more minutes. Melissa, is there anything, I've been trying to think too, is there anything people would typically ask that hasn't been asked just yet? Don't think so. I think one of the things that I may not have verbalized, but I know is on the slide, um, and Megan reminded me when she was talking about transfer credit is that many of our students do come in with advanced standing credit. And what that means is they took an AP exam, they took IB exams, or they maybe attended um, a college where they did not receive credit on their high school diploma, but it is a true standing um, college credit. Um, if your student is in that situation, those scores will be released um, right around July 1st through 4th. Um, those need to be sent to Bentley and your student is the one who needs to send it. The school, the high school doesn't do it for you. College board doesn't do it for them. They need to request all advanced standing credit wherever it comes from, college board, um, IB or um, another college they may have attended. The student has to request that that be sent to Bentley. And what happens is that's electronically sent through a secure system to the admission office. And that's taken into account and posted on their Workday account. So then when we are helping them register, we can see they already have credit for something that maybe we're telling them they have to take in their first semester. Or maybe it's something that will help them take an additional course because it's a prereq to something. So it's really important that students do not forget 
to do that piece of the admission process. Forward all of those scores as soon as possible. And of course, the timing isn't couldn't be at a worse time because it's right around the fourth holiday. A lot of people travel, um, but those requests can be made electronically. So if they have a laptop and access to Wi-Fi, they see that their scores are released and they've gotten fours or fives or whatever the appropriate score is for um, the IB exams, which there's a range and everything can be found on the um, admission webpage. Um, just have them fill out that electronic form real quickly and have those scores sent as soon as possible. Awesome, thank you. We have one more question that came through related to transfer students. If a transfer student has not declared a major but has an idea of what they want, is it a good idea to let their advisor know soon? That's a great question. So typically in the past, um, and um, because you know things that can be a little bit different with the new curriculum, if you know now about, about an, a major that you would like to have added um, for consideration, that is something that you could tell admission now because you know when we go to review your record, if we don't know about a major, we won't plan your courses around that major, your first semester courses. Um, so it could be something that you'd wanna bring up to whoever you're working with at Transfer Admission Now. And they have a really good, uh, they have a really good idea of, you know, yes, that's something we should change now or no, that's something you should wait. You know, it's not gonna impact your first semester courses. That's something you can do in September. Um, so that, that, that's something you could ask Admission Now. And then if you're still unsure, um, and you wanted to to connect with us, you could email us and you could you, or you could also come to the drop in advising we're having um, for transfer students the Monday before registration at the end of July. Um, so it's tough to say if, if it's just something you might want to do um, it, we can leave the leave it up to you as to, you know, do you want to plan on this or not, um, you know. So we don't want you to feel like you have to pick now. It's likely for most students, we can delay that choice if you're not sure, um, you know, depending, depending on what the choices are. So I hope that's helpful. I feel like I can contribute to that even not as a transfer. Um, like as a student, you change your own major like seven times in your head before you actually <laughs> choose one. Um, so like it's it's definitely a good idea to have an idea, um, but don't feel like you need to choose one. Like the end of your sophomore year, like I had one and then I changed it and then I added a minor, then I got rid of a minor, then I added a concentration, then I got rid of a concentration. Like it, it changes. So it, just keep it like, be ready to try things. <laughs> Excellent perspective, Devin, thank you. All right, and if you think of any other questions that may not have come up today, feel free to email those general accounts for both academic services and orientation. And as a reminder, this recording will go up onto the Bentley Orientation YouTube channel. So if you type in Bentley Orientation, you'll be able to see any recording that we have from any sessions. But I want to say thank you to our panelists today for taking time to talk to you all. And thank you for attending this session. Hopefully you received some information and you're feeling better about the academic services resource on campus. A shameless orientation plug. We have 2000s trivia in like a week or two. So sign up for that and come. It's going to be fun. <laughs> All right. And we hope you all have a great day. Bye. Bye.